and it's 10 o'clock. Now your noise stopped, Alexa. Because his microphone is muted. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Got it. Because it still shows green that you're, yeah, so you did the local mute. And here's the other John. Two Johns, no waiting. I, don't, I really don't want to go there. Yeah, well, you don't have to. Um, shall I give one extra minute? I kind of, everybody who I expected to be here is here, I think. Then why give it an extra minute? I, I think you should respect the time of the people who were on time and start. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay, well, we have uh, quite a lot of boilerplate to go through anyway. Okay. Welcome to the final email coin interim for this year. Um, I'm Alexi, and Todd is here as well, and thank you all for coming. Uh, you should be all familiar with the note well. And ITF process and uh, IPR rules and code of conduct. Um, and this is a short version of some of it. Uh, just a reminder, please stick to professional discussions and um, be polite to each other. Um, okay, so we have notes. Who is happy to take notes? I know most of you will be uh, basically, just for the main decisions that are being made, don't need to minute. I, I'm in the notepad. I, you know, if others join me when I shut up, others can type. And, you know, that would be great. So, and if people can pay attention and uh, edit and complete what Pete have missed, that would be great. So, thank you, Pete. This is roughly our agenda. Uh, I think probably two thirds of the meeting is going to be about uh, SMTP spec and uh, John Devine's new draft as well. And then at the end, if we have time, we'll go through some AS tickets as a refresher. And uh, one ticket we'll discuss in more details. So this is this. Any agenda bashing? Okay, if no agenda bashing that I don't believe you're going to be shy. I know you you people. So um this is the working group status from chair's perspective. Uh, Pete's format document is ready for working group last call. SMTP is nearly ready for working group last call. And uh, our hope is that by the end of this session, we'll get an agreement what should be in version 22, <coughs> which should be ready for working group last call. Uh, and then the last document is AS. It currently expired. Um, bad chairs didn't remind editors to refresh it. Um, well, as we were concentrating on other things, uh, we will now be returning to it very shortly. And I'm hoping that it will be completed soon. Yes, Pete. You, you swapped 21 and 22 in 
It, it, oh, 21 is pretty close to the last call. Gotcha. Never mind. Ignore me. <laughs> okay. Yes, I get, I get lost with numbers sometimes as well. Okay. So, with that, um, there are a couple of slides, just a few things that should hopefully be uh, non-controversial that John added in the, in version 21 of the SMTP spec, but I just want to uh, bring people's attention in case they missed it. Um, the first thing was in section 1-2, um, because we did some IANA-related uh, changes, um, make it clear that this document technically is the same as, you know, the revision of the previous documents plus some IANA registry changes to align with contemporary practices and thinking. So, I hope this is not objectionable. If you have any objections or concerns, please bring them to the mailing list. Uh, Right, so um, the other thing that um, we nearly lost, um, there was one ticket about section 79 uh, and John, John Levine uh, suggested some changes in April and um, I forgot to chase it. So here's the slide showing the specific suggestions. Um, can we please have a discussion about whether people like the new text? Is everybody asleep? Looks okay to me. I mean, it's my yes, suggestion, but I still think it's fine. Um. I can certainly live with it. Um, I am nervous anytime we say uh, um, in in the standard system of the AS that the uh, um, that what most sites are doing is is normative. Um, uh, but I think this one's probably okay. I mean, the, the only sites I know that that don't do this are weird things like like um, SMS gateways that fake it by heavy rate limiting and content and, and content filtering. And I don't I don't think it's useful for us to try to try to guess what those corner cases are. Well, what I guess from John's statement about normative is, uh, are we making a recommendation here, or are we just stating fact? And I think it's clear enough that we're just stating fact, so I'm not worried. And, and, and that's why why I can live with this. There's a more fundamental issue, which is uh, is when this situation can arise. And I think I've said this on the mailing list. Um, the uh, <clears throat> uh, our our reality is that as we move from talking about uh, endpoints to talking about end collections of things, so that we've got things under the administrative control of the sending system and uh, and under the administrative control of the uh, of the receiving one uh, if we believe that outside those those endpoints um, the only thing that gets you to a relay is MX records then I'm not certain what this text in either its supervised form or its original one mean anymore Because the only things which are supposed to have relays configured in anymore are within those originator and uh, and and terminator domains. Uh. I I, I can live with this and I don't particularly want to open up the broader problem, but that is the broader problem. Mm -hmm. 
Well, yeah, but um, I mean, there's 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 the benign position, which is there's still some mail mail systems typically have some some hardwired hardwired overrides to get it to get around. I'm hearing a lot of bubbling sounds in the background. They're having trouble understanding you over them, John. That was Alexi now muted. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, there's there's sort of there, there's there's the benign argument, which is that mail systems still typically have a few a few hardwired override routes to, to get around warts and whatever, you know. And there's the other one that people use open relays to send spam. <clears throat> and you know, I, I certainly don't want to go in. I certainly don't want to offer advice uh, offer advice about about spam filtering. But I mean, it, I think in this case, you know. <sighs> The reality, the the reality is so universal that whatever we, you know, that we might as well just say this is, you know, like this is this will make you consistent with the rest of the world, so you're fine. All right, so um, I think we discussed this. I don't see much objection. So John, if you can implement this in next revision, that would be great. Uh, moving on, uh, that's another thing that hopefully is non-controversial, but uh, I just want to make sure that people are aware of this change. Uh, the IANA registration, um, there was a suggestion discussed that instead of saying whether, instead of having a Boolean field for whether a SMTP extension is suitable for message submission, we now have a field that specify um, requirement level like must, should, must not, etc. So this is the new text that John added. Uh, if people want to discuss or have any objections, let's have a quick discussion now. Um, if not, this is just uh, for your information. Any comments? Yeah, it works for me. Sorry, I was trying to figure out what the background noise you're talking about. It might be actually computer itself, uh, but I, I barely hear it. So my apologies for that. All right, uh, if no comments, let's move on. So um, the only other set of related discussions um, and issues is about Appendix B and message submission text, some of which is in Section 7.2. So, um, Let's talk about specific discussion and changes to section 7.2 proposed on the mailing list. Um, Pete, can I volunteer you to discuss this? And Yeah. Uh, um, and, you know, the background here is um, this is strictly cleanup. And if Murray and uh, the IASG are on board with a small charter change to do this. Peachy, if they are not, and, and I think it's the right thing to do, if they are not, um, and, uh, you know, we uh, can't be moving these things around, I, I see no strong reason to be ripping these out. Um, it would be a good cleanup but it is not the end of the world if they stay exactly where they are. This one is simply um, the, the sentence in there is literally about what a submission agent should do to clean up a, a, you know, a situation where it might be wanting to reveal information 
in trace fields, and my feeling is that sentence should be moved out and into 6409, where discussion of that kind of thing makes sense. Um, this one isn't particularly normative. Um, the title change is, again, just a minor uh, cleanup because uh, and mostly from Dave Crocker felt like blind copies was talking too much about um, the, the submission functionality rather than the um, actual uh, MTA functionality, which is don't reveal stuff in trace that was in the envelope. Um, so that's all that's going on here. Yeah, I I, uh, I can live with this change. It's with this particular with the change on this particular slide. My problem is setting we start talking about the appendix. Okay. <clears throat> and especially because there I don't think there's anything normative here. So well, more or less exactly. Right, and as you clarified, um, you're actually suggesting moving this elsewhere, this sentence elsewhere, and then there elsewhere, this might be mangled to be like, you know, there was some objection about it, con the way uh, it's phrased, but that's going to be dealt elsewhere, basically. And, and this particular one, uh, to follow up on something John, I think, said on the list, um, this particular one, because it's not normative, um, because it's a recommendation for how to do something interesting if you want to do something interesting. This seems perfectly reasonable to put in the AS if the, if we do not make the more general change with Appendix B. Okay, thank you very much. And anybody else got problems with that idea? I have a bunch of slides about specific, so, um, yeah, I think this specific change it seems fine to me. Uh, but we'll, I'll have separate slides about procedural stuff and, and we will have a discussion about how we're going to go about it. So let's defer it till then. Okay, thank you. Uh, so that's, uh, Pete, you can stay. Um, John asked me to clarify that Part of the issue with Appendix B, it's not purely for SMTP submission, so it's a more generic case. Yeah, and, and I think I said on the list about this one, <coughs> I agree with John that it does contain normative language and therefore has to land somewhere. Um, it is normative on things that are not true SMTP things anyway, nor true submission things. So wherever it ends up, I think having it as an appendix is perfectly reasonable um, because it's, okay, we've, we've discussed the main protocol. Now here's some normative things to do if you're not following the protocol above. And I think that's true whether it remains in 5321, whether it moves to 6409, whether it moves to the AS, although I think that's a little weird for other reasons, um, but that it's got to be an appendix because it's about not the standard protocol we're talking about here, wherever here is. So I think this, you know, th this point is well taken. Uh, and, and, and that's, of course, why it's been an appendix since uh, 2018. 20 to 21. Um, you just made me realize that on a subsequent slide, when we just discuss procedurally what to do with it, I didn't actually give a choice of leaving it as is. So my apologies for this. I, I, I will remind everybody to presume that, you know, it is there as well. All right, fine, thank you. Okay. The, the, the difficulty with moving it out of the 5321 bis, 5322 bis AS collection is that somebody who is thinking about other kinds of things than message submission 
is never going to look at the message submission document unless we insert a normative reference to the message submission document in, um, in one of those three. And that normative sideways reference is a little problematic in my mind. Stress on a little. <clears throat> Which I, I, I'm, I'm, take, I'm a little, a, 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 as we have discussed repeatedly on, on the list about other things, I, I am more sanguine and optimistic about a, a sideways, look over there, it's over there now, guys, uh, kind of reference. I don't think it would be too disastrous. Um, I'm not convinced it has to be a normative side reference to point to the appendix, especially given that it's an appendix, but... Yeah, I would happy to be happy to leave a stub that basically it says something along the lines of if you're gatewaying from somewhere else, treat it as submission. The the wording yeah. I... yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, although I mean this is one of those things that like when these documents were written, it was a big deal. You know, these days, you know. Other than, you know, it's really hard to think of any sort of gateway other than, you know, this, this weird little things like SMS, you know, or or fax to email, which I think still may exist somewhere. It does. I, I, I will unfortunately mention that I just used a, an old tool that does exactly this this morning. <laughs> <laughs> and and nothing about it is going to change. Nothing about the tool is going to change depending on what we do in this working group because yeah. this tool is old and hasn't been touched in forever, but still. Yeah, I, 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 think, I think it's fair to assume that nobody's going to be, no, nobody's likely to be building new ones with or without our advice. <laughs> I think that's probably right. Yeah, I, 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 I think that's right, but, uh, but like Pete, and I don't know what yours are, Pete, but I've got embedded security systems and things like that that are ancient, are not getting are unlikely to be updated, although although it's not impossible, but do this kind of thing. Oh, Every sure. So, yeah, I mean, I mean, I have a printer that sends email, you know, but I have it configured to point at my submission server, not, not at my relay server. Okay, moving on. And uh, as I uh, I mentioned to some people um, yesterday, my slides are already getting obsolete by, by, by the minute with the discussion progressing. Um, on the next three slides, uh, we'll talk about John's, the other John's document. Uh, and I'm trying to separate technical content of it from a separate discussion about procedurally what, what we want to do about it. So keeping that in mind. Uh, do people want to have a look at what's in John Levine's draft? Or do people remember? Uh, are people happy to... Well, I mean, there's two rather different versions of my draft. One is a replacement and one is an update, you know, and I can uh, just resurrect I, either, think... I, I can resurrect either one depending on what we decide. Right. Um, but I suppose uh, it does not now... ISG once. Partially. Um, it it's... also ha has updated text for what used to be Appendix B, right, in Section 5. Um, do you want me to try to project this or? I attempted to copy Appendix B and just make, you know, a few minor editorial changes to make it make sense in context. I, was, I didn't try to change anything, but go ahead. I, I, my, you know, my comment earlier is, is what applies here. I think Ideally, this should be an obsolete, because I think that would be cleanest, um, again, within the bounds of what we can do as far as charter change. I think the important difference I see 
is that it should remain an appendix and not try to be incorporated into the main text of 6409 to make that clear distinction that <coughs> you don't need to be implementing full submission as described in this document for this appendix to be important to you. And so I, I think trying to incorporate it into the main text into, I think it was section five, nine, I forget. Five. Um, it, it, five is not the right thing. It should be moved out into a separate appendix and, and you know, point it to separately. I mean, if, it, if that's what people want, that's fine with me. I, I think that just gets us out of the whole discussion of what does this apply to? Do you, the, does something that wants to do this have to implement the rest of submission? I, I think, um, you know, th this is a separate piece of information for things that are doing something odd and labeling it as here's an appendix for these odd beasts is the is the cleanest way to make that happen. Okay, so Pete, uh, let me clarify. So what you're suggesting is uh, you're suggesting removing Appendix B from SMTP document and creating new appendix in draft Levine RFC 6409 BIS. And my preference is for the obsolete, the, the, the 01 style of doing it rather than the 02, the, the you know, here's an update to that document. I, I okay. Again, within the bounds of if we can pull this off in, you know, a, a simple charter change. The difficulty with the obsolete plan is that there are some <clears throat> outstanding issues with 6409, which have never been considered important enough to do a revision but if, if we start obsoleting 6409 with a new document, we're under some obligation to address those outstanding issues. And some of them may be controversial. And some of the ones which are probably not controversial may take a lot of time and energy. And that means discussion about whether or not we got them right. And, and I was... especially, especially if we're taking this on in the working group, which that separate question, I'm worried about derailing the AS, which has been moving too slowly anyway, although it was our explicit decision to move it slowly in favor of fussing around with message submission. And that was and the reason I advocated the update plan. I, I will repeat that that is my preference. I think it's cleanest and the world does not end if all of this remains in 5321 this as is, if, if that's what it comes down to, right? If we can do it cleanly and get it into an obsoleted 6409 uh, this, I think that would be the most stylish, clean way to do it. If that's going to make life miserable, we can make an update. If that's going to make life miserable, we can stuff things into the AS if, or, or leave them in 5321 bis. I, you know, I, and this is about what is best. And, and I take John Levine's comment uh, to heart that the, the problem here is once we nail these things down and get them published as internet standard, which is, of course, the hope and, and the reason for doing this, we're almost never likely to open them ever, ever, ever again. So if we can get it done right, let's do it. Which, which of course, is what Randy and I thought when we moved 6409 to Internet Standard. We hoped to never look at it again and expected to never look at it again. And here we are. Be, you know, 
um, slightly misleading. So, but you can argue that you haven't created any new text, so it's already there. Um, it's an interesting argument. Charter reads to me as if it prohibits any other documents, but uh, uh, it's an interesting document. It's an interesting argument. Well, I, I would argue that an updates 6409 is out of scope, not just an obsolete 6409. Barry, I agree. He said it wasn't clear. I think touching, I think, it, as I read the charter, I think touching message submission is out of scope until we have uh, 5321, 5322, and, uh, and the AS finished, and then come back to add additional work. I think that's what the charter says. problem with the sequencing issue gets back to the fact that this applies to things besides 6409, which is one of the reasons why it went into, well, one of the reasons why it went into 2821, it was very early, but uh, one of the reasons why it stayed through 5321. And, uh, and for that set of issues, unless we're going to abandon those things as discussion of things that SMTP implementations are maybe expected to know about uh, if we sequence this behind the other three documents, then we're abandoning normative requirements to something that at least in principle may never happen. This is a nasty interlocking set of race conditions. I'm trying to figure out whether people, whether there is any prevailing opinion within this group, even. And at the moment, I'm I'm not very clear. Why why can't we leave the appendix in in 21, and any potential update or obsolescence of 64 and 9 just references that. The issue of moving it to 6409, the even the temptation to do that is to clean up 5321 bis. If we're gonna leave it in 5321 bis, and and I think that's okay if that's how we end up. Um, it, it, it's not pretty, it's not clean, but it's fine. There's no real need to reference it from 6409. It it, it is getting it out of 5321 bis that's the interesting thing to do but if it applies this to situations other than just submission it probably belongs in 5321 correct i i guess my point is i don't know that it really does i am insofar as we think of submission as dorking around with it before it reaches smtp's mta land uh -huh. And, and, and that's probably where we are thinking about this differently. Because if submission is dorking around with things in various ways before it gets to SMTP land, that's not what 6409 is about. So if one wanted Agreed. to have a, and I am distinctly not recommending this, but if one wanted to have a separate document about dorking around before things got to SMTP, then we'd be having an entirely different discussion than 
pushing it off into right. 1609, which is a very specific piece of protocol. Yeah, and and the, it uh, is. I mean, this really is about gatewaying in in the broader sense. Um, right. And it seems to me that you know we've gotten rid of quite a bit in fifty three twenty one. Um, this with regard to outside of transport and delivery. Um, those are the two things that are there. And so if we could, and that gatewaying has an element of submission to it. Um, but like I said, I am, I am not wed to this. I think this would be cleaner. Um, it, people who read this kind of stuff probably care more about the submission end of things than anything else and might go, ooh, I could just do submission, but I, I, I am, th this is cleanliness, this is not, you know, this is about document hygiene, not about the, the world collapses one way or the other. And that's our other procedural problem, which is the charter explicitly prohibits and we have pushed the we pushed the boundaries of the prohibition but the charter explicitly prohibits uh rearranging and restructuring the documents for elegance so in some sense even if we were to make some major changes to this in 5321 in order to make it prettier we'd be pushing the boundaries of the charter. Those boundaries, again, have already have already been pushed as a narrow, relative to what a narrow reading would suggest. But... Uh, yeah, I read charter today and I agree with John. As sad as I am to say this, that it does explicitly say against, you know, restructuring for the sake of restructuring. Um, So, do we have a feel where this is going? Um, it would be nice cleaner, whether it is 64 or when we look into SCTP. that goes to a SMTP thing. Um, uh, and, but a question here, the, the movement of Appendix B aside, the stuff from 7.2, we still think is reasonable to move out of 7.2 and if it needs to land somewhere, the AS is fine if we don't, if we're not able to do the 6409 shuffle. Is that correct? I think so. I can, I can certainly live with that. I mean, I, I think it's worth at least having the conversation about the 6409 shuffle with Murray. And if Murray says, okay, this one is worth, you know, uh, coming up with a quick charter change, but well, if that goes nowhere, we, we if leave if going, viewer, and we move to the 7.2. If we're going to, to have this conversation, I probably would suggest saying, you know, look, here is, uh, we have a draft. Can we just add this to the charter? Is this going to be, you know, I've got one and a half concerns there. Okay. One of the concerns is it's clear to me, <clears throat> charter aside and in a more perfect world than we actually have, that the right thing to do is create an entirely separate document called um, uh, gatewaying into SMTP. And that gets the 7.2 text, the remaining, um, uh, material in 5321-BIS on gatewaying, all the references in 5321-BIS to 
either 7.2 or 7.6 of the appendix uh, become candidates for moving there and a perfect and that document gets to explain the difference between the message submission protocol and real gateways and other mail systems and in a perfect world that's what we would do not a perfect world bigger change to the charter even than talking about 6409 uh, but in some sense that's where Pete and i should be circling around each other um the second observation is that while talking with Murray is the first step, this is a significant enough change to a charter which went out of its way to explicitly prohibit this change that I anticipate, especially since the working group is far behind the originally anticipated schedule, some resistance from the rest of the ISG to adding work. And if we get into that discussion, I could be wrong, but if we get into that discussion, we will still be sitting here in the spring. Now doing a clean asynchronous update or even a clear asynchronous revision that this working group is asked by the ISG or expanses charter to take a careful look at during the last call process is an entirely different problem. But if it's asynchronous, then we need to do some cleaning up of what's already in 5321. It stays in 5321. And at this stage, I'm really sorry I brought this up because if I had I think nobody would have noticed. Yeah, it's only a full jump. I agree. <laughs> Uh, so the other thing, uh, maybe and, uh, maybe we can just add a sentence to Appendix B saying, look, this appendix, it probably looks weird that it is here, but this is the reason why it is here. why it seems like an odd duck in this document just add a sentence or two explaining that you know this is the best place we you know we found for it so far yeah i, I think i would want to avoid adding such a sentence because i think the sentence itself would be kind of weirdly out of place and be sort of saying um we have some odd politics in the ietf and this is working around them just just leave it. okay uh, i was thinking about a slightly different sentence barry and i don't know if this aligns with what alexi is thinking but if i were to write such a sentence the sentence would effectively outline the history of um of why that appendix got there and point out that there's an interaction with message submission but that there are these other cases and that yeah. stuff. Yeah, that would be fine. And I can attempt to draft such a sentence, but only on condition that people will read it very carefully and, and attack as needed. Sounds good. So do you, Alexi, this is as note taker, do you have a conclusion about this discussion that you want for the notes? Well, I'm in a precarious position because I, I, I propose something and I also need to decide whether, whether this is the outcome of the discussion. Um, I mean, you, you can make Todd decide. <laughs> Uh, Todd's been Todd's been you know n nicely silent during this whole thing. Maybe he's still you know asleep on this lovely morning. Well, I, I can so I can summarize what I hear, and you guys, the chairs, can decide whether I summarized it right. Yep. I mean, I I hear that the result is the, that doing anything with sixty four oh nine is out of scope, and we don't want to recharter to change that. 
So we are going to leave the text as uh, where it is, and John is going to write a some introductory text that explains how we got here. And that everyone can live with that result. Everyone on the call can live with that result. Any I got any, that right. Any objections to what Barry said? See, Pete, I am awake. <laughs> I, I want to hear from the other John, actually, if he's John Levine. Would you do you have a comment? I, I can. I, mean, I can live with it. You know, I I think I share in the you know like like <clears throat> be, be, between the perfect and getting something done, I'll definitely choose the latter. I don't think any of this, John, prevents moving ahead with uh, with uh, sixty four oh nine update or this and. Uh, and and getting the registry change, which we talked about earlier, makes that job a little bit easier or more clear in any event. Okay. Uh, Todd, are you happy with with this? Yes. All right, let it be so then. And I, I've typed something close to that in the notes. Um, if Barry, you have the ability to uh, review what I typed and add to it, because I think you said it better than I typed it. That would be right, helpful. We'll and, and then Alexi and Todd can bring that to the list as the conclusion. And I will start working on the sentence or two, but again, the condition is people are going to pay careful attention because I will probably get it wrong. Uh, fine. Uh, and also, if you can double check what's in draft living RFC 6409 base section five, if there is any better wording for text uh, in Appendix B, just uh, cherry pick it as well. So I think we have a plan for version 22. Do you agree, John? Um, John, do you think the next version will be working group plus callable? If you uh, make me promise, and I agree, and at the moment I would certainly agree, that I don't find any other things rereading the document, which I feel obligated to bring to the attention of the working group, which then sets off other tours of bike shreds and rat holes. Okay. Can I, um, <clears throat> can I cheat a little bit? And what I will say is, whatever else you bring will be working group plus call feedback unless it's a really big deal because i'm pretty sure we'll probably find a few minor things in working group plus call anyway so well, i don't I, I, basically i don't want to be saying that we cannot start working group plus call until we find everything because this just might never end i'm I, I i'm fine with that okay all right sounds good Okay, so, uh, well, I think that was a productive 49 minutes. Um, we have a few slides on AS at the end. Todd, you have, have the floor to drive this. 
Okay. Um, <clears throat> I went through all the uh, currently open tickets for AS. There are 10 of them. Uh, these slides capture what I wrote down about each of the tickets. Um, the first one to come up is, is issue 80. Um, just a clarification, the title of the ticket is clarify where the protocol stands with respect to submission and TLS issues. Uh, not entirely clear from the ticket itself what's supposed to be said because what's there on the screen is uh, the, the uh, numbered list there is pretty much the entire contents of the ticket. That in the uh, the MTA to MTA relay statement, um, I do note that there is mention in the AS of port 587, but not 465 in section four or six point four. Um, there's lots of mention, <clears throat> excuse me, of TLS in section six of the AS, but nothing about specific relay on other than port 25, um, and you know. The question here is if TLS relay on a port other than 25 means message submission on 587 or 465, uh, then we can make note of that in section 46 in the AS, um, or otherwise we can close the ticket. So I'm not sure where to go with this one. I think we can bring it to the list to get final arbitration on that issue. Yeah, to be honest, I, I'm not even sure what does it mean relay on port other than 25. What, what does it mean? Did people have something else in mind other than submission or relay case? I... That, that sounds like something else from the from the distant past, or else it sounds like you know the kind of the, the kind of private arrangements that have always been out of scope for for standards. And if there are private arrangements. Uh, it's not clear why TLS matters because this private arrangement might or might not be over TLS. So it's actually, in a way, it kind of doesn't matter. Yeah. Okay. So uh, just reading your comments and just being a participant, I think sure. we need to acknowledge existence of port five, uh, 465 uh, in AS. And other than that, I think close the ticket. All right. I mean, uh, does anybody else want to disagree with this? Or? I'm, I'm a little confused, and I have to admit, not looking at this text in quite a while. Oh, but uh, but if this is really about submission issues. Um, I wonder whether it's even in scope. If it's TLS issues from SMTP to SMTP, then it's a layering problem, but not a SMTP and possibly even not an AS problem. I don't know. You are the one who motivated creation of the ticket. Yeah, well. <laughs> I think there is a substantial discussion on use of TLS and properties of TLS for a lay case uh, and, you know, advantages and disadvantages, what the, you know, what, what specific functionality it provides. I think the rest, uh, I think we can close this. I mean, the, the AS has an entire section titled confidentiality and authentication with SMTP, and that's where TLS is mentioned in the AS. Um, and there is in 6.4 titled SMTP authentication, there is mention of port 587, but it's basically it says, you know, it's, you know, SMTP auth isn't in scope for the uh, applicability statement. So, uh, but that's the only place that 587 is mentioned in, in the um, AS. Again, I, I haven't looked at it in months. And, uh...
Okay, and that sounds to me like Alexei's proposal to acknowledge the existence of port 465, perhaps exactly where this document acknowledges the existence of 587 um, is sufficient. I agree. Acknowledge 465 and close the ticket. I've added, I've got a comment ready to go into the ticket that says that. Qu question is somebody's gonna have to possibly craft some text. Do it as mentioned 465 or describe the differences between 587 and 465? One, one being, you know, wrapped with TLS, the other one being using start TLS. I, what the text says right now is SMTP off defines a method for a client to identify itself to an M MSA when presenting a message for transmission, usually using port 587 rather than the traditional port 25. So that is the entirety of mention of 587 in the AS. So do we just assume anyone that wants to use 465 understands how 465 works and, and don't get into the bloody details? I mean, is what is different about 465 versus 587? 465 is essentially SMTPS. 587 is starts with plain text and then you do start TLS. At least that's my understanding. If somebody wants to correct me, please do. You're, you're, that, oh, this, that, that's that correct. Different. Yeah. I mean, dude. I'm okay just putting or or four or or 465 since we don't explain 587 either. Yeah. I'm fine with that. Was just asking the question. Yeah. Yeah. Let's just you know, usually using courts. 465 or 587. I think you know, you know, so the, the change to the text there would be change the word port to ports plural and add 465 or before 587. It works for me. Anyone have any objections to that? Uh, I neither object nor not object, but again, I haven't looked at it. And uh, and <clears throat> one of the advantages of getting uh, five three two one bits through a through working group last call is I may actually have the time to pay attention to the AS. Yeah, and what I suggest actually is let's get this small change, get the document up, uh, AS updated, close the ticket. If there are any residual or similar issues. I would rather open a separate ticket, which is more uh, specific, and we can always link it to the course ticket anyway. So, I have commented in the ticket, Ken, even with the suggested change to the text. Thanks, Todd. Yep. Okay, moving on to the next slide. Okay, um, this is going to go sort of rapid fire through the tickets, um, or as rapid fire as we can. Ticket 38, uh, possible clarification of 78 octet limit versus 998 line length limit. I think the text we have makes that clear in 5322, and I think this ticket can be closed. Um, there was a call for perhaps some text example, maybe adding some text examples to the AS back in July of 2021, but nothing's been added to the ticket since then. Um, I, you know, I'll bring to the list whether to make a decision, or what decision, whether or not to close this ticket. Um, but I think closing this ticket seems to be the right thing to do. And right, you know, I say that recognizing probably nobody has read the document recently and can't say, yeah, it's right in there and it, it, all, it all works. But that was my analysis of, of things. Uh, next. Well, and, and actually, now that uh, you mentioned that if we need an example, I can always write an example and we can have a look if people are happy to edit. Well, example demonstrating the difference. Uh, well, again, 
I, I think that I think that um, I think that 822 or 20 5322 sorry <laughs> I think 5322 is, is is fine and makes a distinction in uh, section 2.1.1 um, as to and you know why there are two different limits uh, one speaks to um, you know the 998 character limit being required it's a must for, for SMTP um, the other, the 78 character limit is is more about um, mail clients that you know, do ugly wrapping of of uh, text if the if the line exceeded 78 characters. Um, again, that's probably something that's more limited to text based mail readers now than um, modern day mail readers. So, I think what we have um, in there is probably enough, but. Um, uh, you know, I'll bring it to the list to, to get consensus that there's the ticket can be free. Uh, how about, uh, yeah, uh, post to the mailing list saying, you know, we'll close the ticket. If I, if I can come up with a reasonable example and people are happy with it, then we'll add it. If not, I think closing the ticket is fine. Okay. okay. All right. Next is issue 40. Back at IETF 112, um, there was discussion that we should make sure that these are um, discussed in the AS. So we will just have to Confirm that they are in, indeed in the AS. Had the discussion on the list as to whether or not to close this ticket. But um, if the things are in the AS, then we'll close it. If not, then we'll propose some text on list to to get it to where we satisfy the the ticket as opened. Discussion on this issue. Part of this should probably be identifying extensions that. Uh, <coughs> That have gotten no traction and essentially disappeared. Well, the, the the ticket back in February of 2021 mentioned 8-bit MIME, enhanced reply codes, and DSNs as musts, and pipelining and SMTP UTF-8 as shoulds. Um, there are a couple of comments from you, Mr. Clemson. Uh, in May of 2020. Uh, I don't see any expansion of that list beyond those five. Uh, no, I, th I, th I, I, I think in the positive recommendation sense, that's probably pretty close. The only other issue is whether we want to more or less explicitly deprecate um, some extensions that have, uh, that seemed like a good idea at the time. I've gotten no traction since. And the answer to that question may be no, but it needs to be asked. I, I, I don't know that the question of deprecating extensions is relevant for a ticket that's titled recommended extensions. It seemed that would be a separate issue altogether. If it's a separate issue altogether, then I can generate a separate ticket if that's the way to do that. It, it seems like a swap with, with very little practical benefit. I mean, they're all optional. People aren't going to do it. They aren't going to do it. Okay. Forget I said anything. For, for what it's worth, the current draft has 8-bit mime and DSNs as must, pipelining and EAI as should, and enhanced system status codes as recommended because they are, even though they're widely supported, they're not, it's not ubiquitous, so we chose to go recommended there. Okay. But I'm, I'm not married to any one of those decisions. Did you say 8-bit mime is a must? Yes. Okay. I have noted that we're going to discuss on this whether or not the AS covers the topics and then close the ticket if it does. Uh, issue and, 50. And in, order, in order to avoid getting hosted on my, my own petard, uh, we need to be very careful about the use of the term EAI. 
Okay. Yeah, I just use that uh, while speaking as shorthand, John. It's it's not okay. that you. term is not used. It, it, it's not used in the current text. Good. Thank you. Uh, ticket 51, yeah. AS should cover the use of email addresses in web form. Um, there was a call for proposed text uh, back in October 2022 um, from Alexi to, I think it was to Mr. Levine. There was some discussion on the mailing list about various problematic cases with John Levine. Do you yeah, think I mean, something along those lines we can further refine in London? Yeah, I just, I, you know, we are at impasse. I mean, because if you look at the HTML spec, it basically says this is a, this this disagrees with with the mail with with the mail standards. The mail standards are wrong. Neener neener, mm -hmm. and and they're not going to change that. So I think what it says now is it says, well, you know, it's like like two dots don't work and dots do weird stuff. So I. Yeah, but the, the current text is kind of a, a boiled down version of what LXC, the two Johns, and myself had come up with. I, I think what's there now is it, it, it is it is good is as good as we're going to get it. So you know, these are these are obvious mistakes in the HTML thing that are easy that are easy to fix. And other than that, I don't think there's any more, more benefit in arguing with them. Yeah, there actually is some possibility that those HTML specs getting tuned because uh, um, try to struggle with the implications of uh, of not asking email addresses as uh, as Sarah like her fluffle over there. Yeah, well, I mean, th they already tried and failed. I mean, back when what WIG and, and W3C were separate, W3C said you can use any UTF-8, which was, of course, wrong. You know, yes. so, they took that, so they took that out, and I don't think they've made any progress since then. Um. There have been some serious discussions between the W3C internationalization group and the W3C uh, HTML crew, to some extent the WWG HTML crew. Am I predicting success? No, I wouldn't go that far. Uh, John Levine, just for clarity, will you say when, what is there now is as good as we're going to get? You're referring to Section 4.3 in the AS, is that correct? Yeah. Okay. So take, let's close this ticket to the list. Does that work for everybody? Any objections? Okay, I've updated that ticket. 66. Recommendation about time zones to use in date and received header fields. We have a status ready, ready to be closed. Oops, that's not the right one. Um, there is quite a lot of discussion in the uh, text of, I believe, 5322 um, regarding time zones. The most recent comment in the ticket was from Ken. After reading the current thread for this issue, it looks like Levine Clemson would like for this text to be added, clarified in 5322 bits and leave AS alone. Um, that was October of 2022. So looking for time zone discussion in- Someone summarize what they think is not said in 22 that needs to be? I, I I'm not saying that it's not said in 2020 or in 5322. Um, I think at the time this ticket was written, there may have been some thought that there was something missing. But there was a discussion on the mailing list about the use of minus zero zero colon zero zero time zone resulted in the following suggestion recommendation about. What time zone should be chosen for a given message, either in the date header field or in the various other fields and the trace fields in which timestamps are applied and or what receiving system should do about them? And in 5322, 
I believe the date and time specification section 3.3 covers those cases. That <clears throat> that was my memory of the conclusion of that discussion. But, you know, I, I am known to think happy thoughts about not having to make changes. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at 5322 bits now, you know, and it, it notes that minus minus oh minus zero means we don't know what time it is. And I think that that covers the issue. So I think we're done. Yeah. Do I have to get consensus on the list to close the ticket? Yes. Okay. All right. Ticket's been updated. Not closed, just updated with notes of what to do next. Uh, next slide, please. 78, uh, advice against using URL percent encoding on non-ASCII email addresses to create ASCII version of them. Question was raised on list by John Clemson, um, which is mostly quoted there, but um, the text that John, and that's that's all that's in the ticket right now is the text that John put in the uh, on the list. Um, I think that text is a good starting point for discussing this issue. Um, but I think that bringing that issue to the list and figuring out what we want to say and where we want to say it is probably the best approach here. There's already a section 4.2 in the current, well, now expired draft that essentially uh, encapsulates John's text. Okay. If, if you don't mind my messing things up a little bit, um, I would I, I would like to add another clause that says you can't puny code it either because there, there are people who still believe that. You can't what? Use, you can't use puny code to encode local parts. Now, don't tell anybody there are actually a few systems in China that do, but in general, you can't do that. Okay, can you? I'll send you a note. Okay, that works. And for whatever it's worth, I definitely agree with John on that. That 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 uh, that's a, that that very strong suggestion and the uh, and the percent very strong suggestion are uh, are both very useful here for slightly different reasons, but important. And the only only controversy I see, which takes us back to a different piece of an earlier discussion is uh, is whether this should really be handled by a uh, by an update to uh, um, uh, to 5891 um, but I hope we don't have to go there especially given the status of the current updating queue of 5891 right Okay, so John Levine will send me some text about puny code, and then we'll start the discussion on the list about this issue 78. Well, I might have heard... to copy me on that suggested text so we'd stay in sync, but I don't anticipate any problems with anything they're right. Well, yeah, I... What, what, I, what I scribbled down, Todd, was text was added to 4.2 to capture the rest of this issue, Correct. and that John just adding um the note about don't use puny code either right and that's what what i captured in the ticket was levine to provide no read puny code to expand text in 4.2 in as and then we would discuss on list if section 4.2 addresses this ticket so i think we're in agreement Pete. 79 add international consideration section to uh applicability statement Uh, we have a section in there. There is no section called um, 
international considerations. There are three uses of the string international in the AS. One is a link to um, RFC 6531. And the other two are titles of RFCs 6530 and 6531 in the informative references section. Um, John Clemson had some text on the list um, regarding what this ticket meant, um, but there's been nothing about nothing forward since then. So uh, probably just I will start a discussion on the list regarding this ticket and see where we end up. Uh, speaking for myself on this, uh, I, I think the 6530 series documents have enough sort of architectural applicability discussion in them already that a simple pointer out to them um, is reasonable for the EAI stuff. Um, and then pointers separately to um, mine for, you know, internationalizing uh, the uh, the contents of messages, and perhaps, um, you know, eight bit mime along with that is probably sufficient. There's plenty of discussion elsewhere about these issues. Okay. Yeah, I agree that it's unlikely we have anything usefully new to say at this point. We're just noting those quotes here. So I will... From a structural standpoint, then, if we do add this section, should the current 4.2 about percent encoding and puny code fall under that as a subsection? Well, I'm not clear that it needs, an, based on what uh, John and Pete just said, I'm not clear that the, a section has to be added. Um, it might be enough that we already have the references in there where we have them, but um, we'll talk about it on the list. Yeah, for 4.2, the, the work of saying don't percent encode and don't puny code it is um, uh, saying how not to do internationalization. Um, you know, I, I think a proper internationalization section might just be pointers out so i don't i don't think anything needs to change there but fair enough alexia is there another slide or is that it that's it okay there are three more issues that weren't covered on the slides 84 yeah no, i didn't i didn't want to talk about them gotcha uh not this time Okay. Uh, so I've updated the uh, s seven tickets we did talk about. Um, looks like there will be seven new threads on the mailing list to talk about. Yeah, I think uh, it would be uh, very good to close various tickets and see how much we have left. Um, because we we'll, we definitely need, well, the draft needs to be refreshed and we, we have a f some, some work to do. but. I don't actually see tons of tickets coming up that needs addressing at this point. For what it's worth, we've got a code freeze coming up in a couple weeks of fast mail. So other than fixing bugs, I, sh I should have plenty of time to churn on this document. That's good. And I think with that, <coughs> thank you. Thank you all for coming. Thank you for the productive discussion. And uh, so, uh, John Clancen, when do you think we can get 22 version out?
Um, let me craft the new sentence for uh, Appendix B and and a couple of other things you've shown up on the list, and uh, and see if there's any controversy about those. If there is not, I would suspect I can get the thing up within about a week. That's a prediction. Oh, that's that 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 that's a prediction, not a promise. Yeah. I would like to start last call before before the end of the new year. I know Christmas is coming, but uh, we should, you know, and I can make it four weeks to cover for holidays and stuff. Alternately, I could decide to uh, deliver it on December 24th, grow my beard, and pretend it's Christmas present. Okay. No. <laughs> yeah, if you, if you think you can do it uh, quickly, that would be great. Uh, yeah, and then, uh, yeah. Uh, format document was apparently in working group last call, but that was um, a year or two ago. So I think we need, there were enough, maybe small, but enough changes that we will just redo last call for for it so we'll do two last calls in parallel so that people can also cross check all right and with that thank you very much and um, hope to get a bit of work done and working group started before the end of the year and then i will see you online next year after that okay bye everybody Happy, happy holidays to all.